<laughs> Welcome to Chess, ladies and gentlemen. So I figured, you know, I'll go ahead and wear my another one of my little Hawaiian type shirts. I don't even know where I got this from. I just random. I don't know. Just, just I don't know. I have some shirts. My grandpa got some shirts too. So, you know, I got a uh, got a whole bunch of stuff. You know, my grandpa gave me a lot of clothes when I was, you know, when I was younger. So, you know, I got a lot of like, you know, the grandpa flow going on. So this is like one of his chill shirts, maybe. I don't know. But what I do have for you guys um, is I have a Philippines versus Philippines matchup for you guys. Uh, as you guys know, Roderick Nava and Rogelio uh, Barca. Uh, I think it's a uh, Barcenia. I'm pretty sure that it's it's the N, it's the it's the Ella uh, with the the double L. If not, it's a uh, Barcelina, uh, Barcenila. Yeah. Um, so one of those two, however you pronounce it, I'm not 100 sure. Um, but uh, this is taken from this year. And I call it uh, the Philippines Kababayan match. Um, you know, I learned from you guys, you know, how you say countrymen, you know, Kababayan. And so for all of my people in the Philippines, I would say, uh, I would say, Mabuhay to you. Kamusta na? Magandang umaga. Magandang apon. Magandang aro. Magandang gabi. However, whenever you watch this video, Masaya koma kita king muli. Uh, Meraming salamat po sa nanunawod ing a king ma video a king ma kaibigan. Mabuting pag body ing at lagi ang masal tayo. Mag lunch na tayo. Uh, I'm trying to hit y'all with all kinds of stuff, man. But if you guys are ready to go, uh, we will take a look and see what we have for this game. All right, so let's roll. All right, so we got d4. Knight comes to f6. Knight to f3. d5. C4, we got E6, and we have knight to C3. So we have the queen's game of decline to three knights variation. So, you know, this is something that you guys have seen on my channel, you know, before. Uh, so, you know, this should look very familiar to you. Um, you know, this has followed a lot of the type of lines that we've seen in other, other games like Wesley So type stuff. So, you know, this is nothing new for you guys. So we do see bishop to E7. Uh, we see bishop to F4. So, you know, we're intending with this to just get our bishop outside the chain, chain, uh, the pawn chain and then play something like e3 uh you know you always have the option of doing that i mean you can always just kind of do that sometimes uh you know you have the option to kind of fee and kettle the bishop just kind of just like whatever your per personal taste is so we see castles by black we see e3 uh we have a6 uh and then we have c5 so as you guys know normally when you're seeing these types of positions you'll see like a c5 coming from black themselves uh, but now that we do have c5 for white, uh, you know, of course, c5 is impossible for black. So we do see b6. Uh, so that kind of changes uh, the nature of your, you know, your your pawn break and stuff as black. You know, now you're forced to play b6 to try to break down what white has going on. Because as you can see, white has a really nice amount of space in this particular position with the push of c5. So, you know, you can't let that stand. Uh, so we do see b4. Um, you know, it's also possible as well, you know, just to take like pawn takes b6, pawn takes b6, and then rook comes to c1. It's roughly about the same type of deal. I mean, you know, you do get some some pluses with, you know, getting your rook uh, on this open file. Uh, and, uh, you know, this can be kind of dangerous. You never know. Um, but it, it does end up, like I said, being about the same thing. So b4 is definitely, you know, like up there with, uh, you know, pawn taking as well. So uh, we do see a5, um, you know, kind of especially just attacking this uh, structure. Uh, just continuously attacking. So we do see a3. Uh, so you see that's a really interesting looking structure. Like pretty much all these pawns are connected with each other, attacking each other. So um, we do see pawn takes b4, and this is the novelty of the game. Um, if we actually back up in 1976, so the same year that Eugene Torrey played, uh, you know, um, uh, Anatoly Karpov, um, we did see a Kasparov game where pawn took c5 and then pawn took c5. Um, so that's, you know, kind of interesting, the lines and stuff that we're going down for that particular point. Uh, but like I said, we do see a uh, pawn takes b4, novelty of the game. So pawn takes b4. We see rook takes a1. Of course, you have to play this move because, I mean, your rook is like super undefended in the corner. So, you know, you can't just let it sit there. So queen takes a1 and we see knight to c6. Uh, and, uh, you know, being a little sneaky with the pawn over here, you know, saying, hey, let me try to get at your pawn. So we do see queen coming to b2. Um, you can also play queen to a4. Um, it's just kind of like a little bit of a different, you know, move. 
um, maybe slightly stronger, but it just, uh, you know, not only does it protect the pawn, but it also places an attack on the undefended knight. So it has a little bit more oomph to it, but, you know, queen to b2, you know, does like what you're, you know, hoping to do. Because, I mean, you know, if you attack the knight with queen to a4, I mean, it's going to get defended some type of way. So, you know, um, it's not getting that much. So we do see pawn takes c5, pawn takes c5. Uh, we see knight down to e4, uh, and then we see bishop to d3. We see f5, um, and I mean, I'll be honest, as far as white is concerned, you know, whenever I play certain positions where somebody goes knight to e4, then they like cement it in there with f5, like this actually is kind of annoying, man, <laughs> because you're like, man, like you literally, like, it seems like you don't have the ability to ever remove this knight away, uh, and it can be very, I mean, at least for me, it's annoying, so I don't know, um, but we do see uh, h4, um, and we see e5. And so you're kind of trading a central pawn for a wing pawn in this position. So knight takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop takes e5. Uh, and then you see bishop takes h4. Uh, and then, you know, now you have a very, you know, a very real threat on this f2 pawn. So you're going to go ahead and, you know, play g3. As you guys always know, you know, this f2 point pretty much at all times until you pretty much get into like an end game. It's like a very, very tender spot. Uh, so, you know, black is just trying to prey on that type of, uh, you know, scenario. So <clears throat> Bishop comes back to F6. Uh, and this is, you know, this is a little bit displacing personally, because like, I mean, you don't really have a lot of good places to put this Bishop. Uh, you can't really leave it there because if you trade, you're going to be messing up your pawn structure with this. So you definitely don't want that to happen. So you're pretty much forced to trade in this position. <clears throat> so Bishop takes F6, Rook takes F6. We do see queen to B3. Uh, and this is actually a pretty nifty move. Um, you know, because you are attacking this uh, under defended pawn uh, and, uh, you know, you, you're pretty much forced to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, defend it with C6. But unfortunately, this actually wins you a pawn um, because you do have bishop takes E4, pawn takes E4. And then, uh, you know, exploiting the pin on this diagonal, uh, you are able to take on E4 with the knight. Um, so, you know, and you are also getting a tempo on the rook on F6. So uh, this is actually a very ideal position for, for black to be in. Also, you know, if you do want to move the knight, you know, up here to D6, um, it pretty much can't be challenged only by the rook. Um, because this bishop, as you guys can see, uh, this bishop is a light square bishop, so it can never influence this D6 square. So uh, we do see queen coming to A5. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have the very saving queen to C3. Uh, and not only uh, is it going to save your knight, um, but it's also attacking, you know, the undefended queen on a5. Um, so it allows you to trade queens and then to just in time get your knight out of harm's way. Because with the queen off the board, you know, the queen, th this pawn unpinned, now, you know, your knight is on pre. So, you know, that was a nice, that, that was some nice calculation to go back from, uh, you know, to go back from this position and kind of be able to kind of calculate and see all the way to queen a5. I mean, that was pretty that was pretty nice and deep. So uh, we do see this position. We have bishop down to a6, uh, and we have the very, very accurate f4. Now, the, the thing I'm going to say about this is the fact that white has put all of their pawns on dark squares. And so basically made it to where black can just like never attack his, his pawns. Uh, so this bishop is just going to literally just kind of just be moving. <laughs> and it's just never going to influence any of these pawns ever. So, you know, that is something that you want to think about, you know, when you're playing against the bishop. Uh, if you have a knight yourself or, you know, whatever the situation is, uh, you know, you want to try to make it to where your your pawns aren't attackable by your opponent's bishop. So uh, we do see uh, rook back to f8. We see king to f2. We see bishop down to d3. Like I said, I mean, the bishop is just not influencing the pawn structure at all. We see rook down to d1, attacking the bishop. Bishop comes back to f5. We see rook to a1. We got rook to, uh, to b8. And then we see rook to a2. You know, we don't want any rook. Uh, rook attacks are going on um, because that can be kind of annoying. Uh, so we do see h5 because, you know, maybe at some point, you know, the king could have came up to f3 and pushed uh, g4 uh, and just kind of knocked this bishop to like a, a you know, a worse square. Uh, so we didn't want to see that. So we do see king to e2. We see king to h7. Uh, we see uh, king to d2. We see king to g6. Uh, and um, we do see knight to d1 by Nava. But one of the things that you want to notice about the position is uh, this king has just basically made a situation possible where this pawn is now pinned. Uh, so if he actually saw rook to a6, 
uh, there is really not a good way to either hold on to this pawn or this pawn um, because this pawn uh, th this pawn is pinned. So this pawn is like literally capturable. Uh, and like I said, there's just really no good way to defend against it. I mean, the only thing maybe that remotely does anything is maybe bishop to d7, but then you're able to just take on d5. Uh, even if you were to, you know, go ahead and do this, I mean, that pawn is still pinned. So there's always these you know, problems that you have with trying to defend, you know, this particular position. So this was a really nice uh, continuation um, that we could have saw. But um, we do see, uh, I think, uh, I think Barcinella, he, he notices this at this point. So that's why he backs his bishop up to d7. Uh, so we see rook to b2, um, which isn't uh, the most, I mean, usually when you're up material, you want to trade. Uh, but in this particular position, um, knight to f2 is ideal, uh, and it's basically like, you know, you're, you're, you're hoping to try to get into, uh, you know, e5, because like I said, I mean, this light square bishop cannot influence the dark squares, period. So if you're able to get your knight into here, this is just going to be like a super knight in the center of the board. So, you know, that's ideally what you want to try to get into, but we do see rook to b2. Uh, and so that actually makes the game fairly even, but, uh, Barcinella does resign. I mean, not resign. He does decline the trade. Uh, so he basically just kind of passes the advantage back. Um, so, you know, pretty much nothing, you know, nothing happened as far as advantages go. So we do see knight to f2, um, you know, because, you know, Roderick's like, hey, man, let me go ahead and try to see if I can't get some type of something rolling. Uh, so we do see bishop to f5 because, you know, black does not want that. And also, if you are able to trade this bishop for this knight, uh, it is going to make your position much easier to play. Uh, because like I said, this bishop doesn't really have a lot of attacking possibilities uh, and it doesn't have as much scope as you'd like. Um, so that would definitely be a nice trade for black to go into. So king comes to e2. We see rook to a3. We got rook to b6 now. Uh, so we see rook down to a2 with check. We see king coming to f3. Uh, we see bishop back to d7 and then we see e4. So we start to see some breakthrough going on by white. Uh, so the pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, and then we see rook to a3. Uh, with check and these these situations can be a little bit annoying because you know you don't really have uh you know anything good to block with i mean you're kind of forced to go in a backward direction which is not where you really want to go you really want to try to push your king up but you know that's just the nature of the situation so the king comes to f5 and then we see now knight to d6 and we have gotten it into like you know that really really juicy square uh so we've definitely improved the position quite a bit for uh for novice so rook to d or knight to d6 with check king comes down to g4 uh, and then we see uh, Rook to B7, and something that you you'll like you'll notice that Roderick Nava is doing, um, or just period like a player should be doing, is looking at all the weaknesses that Black has in their position, or your opponent has in their position, and trying to attack it. You know, you notice this Bishop is uh, you know undefended. This rook is undefended. You know, these pawns are maybe a little bit loose and stuff like that. So, you know, you're just trying to like just pick pick at what you know Black might have going on. So, uh, we do see Rook to A2 a check. Uh, we see king to d3. We see rook to a3 with check. We see king down to c2. So you see like the king is kind of trying to zigzag over to the queen side there. Uh, so we do see bishop to f5. Uh, and so now, like I said before, now we're picking on this rook. So now this rook has been attacked. So we're, we're attacking the bishop that's undefended. We're attacking the rook that's undefended. And so now the rook is in kind of like a, you know, a, a disadvantageous position. So we do see rook to d3. Uh, you know, attacking this undefended pawn that we have. So, you know, Black's trying to do their own kind of thing right here. So, we have reached a point in the game that if you do want to pause the video uh, and see the killer move uh, that White has at their disposal, go ahead and do so now. All right, cool. So, some of you guys, I think probably most of you guys noticed that this this pawn is like undefended. Like maybe you were paying attention to your own pawn and thinking maybe you want to go like rook to a rook to b4, or maybe just kind of take the bishop directly or something like that, right? But the the monstrous killer move in the position um, is actually rook takes g7 with check. And now the problem with this is you are now deflecting this king away from the defense of this uh, pawn. So what you are doing with this one move is you are attacking black. You are about to win a piece. And at the same time, you're going to be defending this pawn like literally. So every every problem that you think you might have in the position is solved by rook takes B, uh, g7 with check. So now the king is forced down to f3. And now you have taken on f5 uh, and you have simultaneously defended not only this pawn, but this pawn at the same time so you literally solved everything and it was like the best possible move to play and so you know this is this is the way Roderick Nava said hey let me go ahead and go this way so 
Uh, we got ripped down to D2 at check, but then that allows King coming to C3. And so now you're, you know, you're evicting the knight from, you know, the area. Uh, so the rook does come to E2. Uh, we see King to C4. Uh, and then, I mean, we're, we're actually getting into a point where um, uh, 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 Barcenia, he, he's getting into time trouble in this position. So, uh, you know, he, he's kind of starting to, you know, his position is starting to slip quite a bit. So he actually plays rook to E2, which as you guys can see, is just like a complete blunder of his rook. Uh, and so Roderick Nava says, give me the rook. Um, so he goes ahead and takes the rook. Uh, and uh, so the king comes to E4. Uh, we see rook over to e7 with check. So now we're defending our rook. Uh, we see king down to f3. We see rook to e5. We got h4. Uh, trying to see if we can drum up some type of counterplay. Uh, we see f5 because Roderick now is like, hey, I'm not even worried about that over there, man. Uh, we got pawn taking g3. We see f6. Uh, we see g2. Uh, and we are not worried about giving up our knight. So we do take knight takes g2. And it is actually in this position um, that Barcenia does run out of time. Um, uh, he only had about like half a second left or like a second left when he made uh, that pawn move. Uh, so he actually just ran out of time in this position. But even not even running out of time, I mean, you see the position like, I mean, this this pawn is about to queen. Uh, and I mean, if we did, I mean, just say, for example, we did something like this. I mean, you know, you're going to get you're going to be getting checked. You're going to be getting checked again and you're going to be getting mated. So, I mean, you guys, you guys see that. I think everybody out there sees that. So um, that is that. Um, and so, I mean, it, it's a, it's a nice game. I mean, it was, it wasn't really roller coastery, but you know, it definitely was close for a while. And then it kind of started, you know, you know, Nava started getting like a nice little advantage and stuff like that. And just, you know, when you get an advantage, like the main thing you want to do is like not make mistakes. Cause I mean, I get like great positions all the time and I'm like, man, I'm winning. And then all of a sudden I just blunder it. Like, okay, <laughs> that's literally all I did yesterday. So. Anyway, uh, there will be better days maybe. But anyway, for all my people in the Philippines with these different good mornings, my ayon bum tog, mayad na agahan, nine bag na bigat, masantos ya kabasan, marhen na aga, buenas dias, ma ayon aga, mapia na uma, kapian kapuno dios, mayap a abak, mapia, mayad na aga, mapia, I think I said that right. Yeah, mayapa abak, mayad na aga, mapia agai, mapia kapapita, my big abukla, maraja na buntog, maria my nat, maupe na aga, and kasan yangan si elubi. Salam, assalamu alaikum to anybody else. And yeah, I think that's it. And I think I already said that part. I didn't get the other part yet. And so, uh, I appreciate everybody. Uh, and I'll see y'all next time.